Should you reach out to your ex? Much like the decision to get a tattoo, there are three very simple rules you can follow to guide your decision. To narrow the focus for the application of these rules, of course the decision is unique to your circumstances and if you're pretty far down the divorce path, or you've made peace with the divorce and you don't have a lot of negative energy around the topic, you know, maybe you and your ex both came to the realization that you'd be better off not married together and you're on good terms and things are really amicable, this probably isn't as much of an issue. Additionally, if you have kids together and you need to communicate to take care of your children and deconflict pick up and drop off times, that's going to inform your communication and topic selection. However, if you find yourself wanting to tell your ex how you feel and you're still coming to terms with the reality of your divorce, talking with your ex one-on-one, -on -one, unprepared, might not be such a great idea. So we can borrow a couple of those rules for getting a tattoo. Like a tattoo, you want to plan it out a bit. And the reasons for this are so that you don't come off unhinged, irrational, or dangerous, and you definitely don't want to say something that you'll regret later or in the moment, or that could be used against you in a custody hearing. So rule number one is record what you want to say rather than delivering it off the cuff. Do this ahead of time. Get a good second opinion before you share your thoughts and not after, and don't rush the decision. Certainly don't rush the conversation. If you're certain your ex really needs to hear what you have to say, write it down in a journal. Record it in a voice memo or in a video. Give yourself some time to decide what to do with what you've made. Don't send it or communicate it to your ex or the wider public in any way until you've taken that time. That will allow you to seamlessly transition into rule number two. Now, when getting a second opinion, just like in the tattoo episode, which you can watch here, Make sure your friend is not going through a traumatic life experience of their own that will skew their advice. You need good advice on what you're going through, not someone else's trouble projected onto and compounding your own. And as I've mentioned before, if you're not eating right, you're not sleeping well, if you're maybe using alcohol or other substances as a crutch or to numb yourself from what you're going through, getting a good second opinion is key because you may not be making the best decisions. So. Get a good second opinion, an empathetic outside perspective whose primary interest is your well-being. This is vital. Use this tool. Share what you've written or recorded with your friend and get their thoughts on it. If they don't try to talk you out of it, they can hopefully give you some advice on things to exclude from your communique or colorful phrasing to avoid. They might even volunteer their services to act as an intermediary when you want to have this discussion, if your ex is willing to talk with you. Now, if you've written it down or recorded it somewhere, you've gotten a good second opinion, and you find yourself crunched for time, and the only chance to tell her how you really feel is now or never because you'll lose the moment and it has to be right now, go ahead and wait. It feels unsatisfying in the moment, but offer yourself a reward for making the right decision to not rush it by going out to a movie or dinner, maybe with that friend who lent you their perspective and their help, or you can also hit the gym for a nice workout if you still have a lot of energy around the topic and you need a productive outlet. Your body and your future self will thank you. If you do ultimately decide to still have the conversation and your ex agrees to it, send the letter or share the video or voice memo following these rules should help you ensure that you don't dig yourself into trouble that you don't need or want. As always, Thank you for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and make sure to watch my recent video on my three rules for getting a tattoo after a divorce available here. I'll see you on the next one.